Hi and welcome to the first video in my series on configuring AutoCAD. My name is Chris. In this video, we're going to get started with a template. This is the first the first part in a template creation process, and we're going to be working on a, a an architectural template. This video is geared more towards people who already have experience with AutoCAD. So if you're not familiar with AutoCAD, I would recommend my getting started with AutoCAD uh, playlist which will take you through the basic, the, the fundamentals of AutoCAD and how to get around it. Um, this is kind of once you've got your, your, your sea legs under you, you can dive, dive more into the, the nuts and bolts of AutoCAD. So let's get started here with some drawing variables. We're going to talk about seven different drawing variables in this, uh, in this video. We're going to talk about VisRetain, FieldEval, LTS, MSLTS, PSLTS, Miratex, and number eight, I guess number eight, uh, is save time. Um, and these, I feel like, are all, these are, these are the most important uh, drawing variables to me as a, as a, as a CAD manager, um, because I find that they resolve the most issues uh, that, that I run into with, with my colleagues. So let's get started here. I've gone ahead and pulled my my command prompt into the middle of the screen. We're going to be using this uh, pretty much exclusively during the, the video. And we're going to start with VisRetain. Now, um, a word about these commands. Uh, these are all drawing variables. There are three kinds of variables in AutoCAD. You've got user variables, which are specific to users. You've got system variables, which are kind of global. And you have drawing variables, and they're specific to the, the file that you're in. And I find it to be extremely helpful to be able to set these variables in a template so that every time I create a new drawing out of my template, it propagates the, the correct variables across my new drawings. Uh, in addition to that, if you're not familiar with these commands, or, if, or, or any of the commands in, in AutoCAD for that matter, AutoCAD has fantastic documentation, and you can get it really easily by just typing the command, right? So for, in this case, we're going to type visretain, and just press F1, and it will bring up this dialog that has all of the documentation on visretain in this case. So I would strongly recommend that if you if you have questions about AutoCAD, uh, before you ask them to anybody, take a look at the documentation because um, a good chunk of the time you can you can get your answers out of the documentation really well. So so if you have questions about these these uh, commands, please before you ask me about them, I I would uh, I ask you that you just look them up in the in the uh, the help files before you before you ask questions. So we're going to start with VisRetain. What VisRetain does is it makes it so that when you XREF a drawing into another drawing, the XREF holds the same layer states, the same properties for the layers, which layers are turned off, which layers are frozen, which layers um, are which colors and line weights and all that jazz. It will maintain the original properties, the properties of the original drawing that you're, you're XREFing in, into your into your um, your model. So, for example, if I have a if I have a a background that I'm working on, a floor plan that I'm working on, and I XREFed it in, and I wanted it to look one way for the entire drawing. It's possible in AutoCAD that you can you can make changes to what's displayed in the XREF from within your file. And if VisRetain is turned on or set to one, those will be held. But if it's if it's turned off, what happens is every time you reload your, your XREF, those changes are kind of wiped. And you get a clean slate back to the settings that are in the, the source file itself. So for example, in the source file, if you have layer zero turned off, and in your drawing, you have the XREF in there and the layers are turned on in the XREF. If you reload your XREF with VisRetain set to zero, layer zero will go turn back off. And it's the same thing with, with any layer that you might have. 
So we're going to go ahead and set viz retain from 1 to 0. And again, this is assuming that I'm going to be bringing in X refs, and I want my X refs to look exactly the same way that they do when I open them and when I save them uh, by themselves. The next thing we're going to work on is field eval. Now, fields in AutoCAD are fantastic, and I love them, and I use them regularly. Um, they're really great. I, I do a lot of data extraction from AutoCAD um, for analytics, um, and fields are invaluable in that. But if you don't have AutoCAD set, set up correctly, um, your fields don't regenerate properly. They don't evaluate when you want them to, when you expect them to. And so in order to, to force that, you can set this field eval variable. Now there are a bunch of different settings for it. I believe in AutoCAD 2015 and it comes set at 31, which is where I like it to be. So you type field eval, and you set it to 31. You'll see it's already there at 31. You can see here, if you go pull up the help, the initial value in AutoCAD 2015 is 31, but there are all these additional values that you can set it to that will change when fields update. Uh, if you haven't had this happen to you yet, it's going to happen if you try using fields at some point, and you're gonna pull your hair out. And then remember this video, <laughs> the field out eval, because it's, it's fantastic for, uh, saving you some hair loss. So field eval is set to 31. That's the second variable that I always set in my templates. The next thing that we do, the next three things have to do with the line type scale. The first one is the actual line type scale, the LTS. And we're going to set that to one. And the reason why I set that to one is because I want everything that I see on my screen to be exactly the same when I print it. And if you monkey with your LTS, it's possible that you're going to have discrepancies between these and you'll wind up having to come up with these strange conversion factors that, um, that you use to, to make your lines look correct. And, and that's just a waste of your time. So we're going to set LTS to one. And in conjunction with that, we're going to set the model space LTS, which is kind of like a model space override. In fact, let's take a look at the documentation and see. Oops, I pressed F5 instead of F4, F1. Um, yeah, it doesn't give a whole lot of detail on it. Um, but it's it's effectively an override for model space. Um, and we're going to set that from 1 to 0. So again, what that means is that your LTS is going to be 1 period. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Your LTS will be one. Now you can set your LTS on individual objects to be different, but the LTS for the drawing itself will be set to one. And we're going to repeat that same process for our layouts. And that's where the PS LTS command comes in. Now you'll notice we have two different layouts. And so we're going to have to run the PS LTS command twice, uh, once on each on each layout to set the, the paper space LTS. So again, we just type PS LTS and set that to zero. And again, what this means is that your LTS is one period, regardless of whether you're looking at it on paper or in your model or in space or at the bottom of the ocean or wherever you happen to be, your models, your LTS is, is one and that's uh, definitive. So let's go ahead and repeat that process on layout two here. PSLTS, set that to zero. What that means is that there's no override. You, your, your paper space isn't going to override your model space's LTS and display differently. What it looks like in model space is what it's gonna look like in print. And that's the end of the story. So that's the LTS functionality we do, the LTS, MSLTS, and PSLTS. And the next thing we do um, is a command here called mirror text. And what it does, M-I-R-R-T-E-X-T, and what that does um, is it gives you the option 
to uh, retain text direction or mirror text when it gets mirrored. So whether you want your text to read backwards when you mirror it, or whether you want it to maintain a, a forward reading uh, direction. Now by default, I believe this again comes um, set to zero, which is fantastic. Uh, you know, in older versions of AutoCAD, it didn't. And that was a source of some frustration for me. I know uh, I'm assuming other people as well. And uh, so setting mere text to zero in your template can really save you a lot of heartache um, later on down the line. The last variable that we want to talk about before I show you how to save this as a template is the save time variable. So we're going to go to type save time. And this is exactly what it sounds like. This is your auto save and the frequency with which you auto save. I got it set to five minutes here. And that's the recommendation that I would, I would have for you is that if you, you set it to five minutes, five minutes is a fairly good, um, safety net. I mean, if you lose five minutes worth of work, it stinks, but you're going to make it up in three minutes, right? It's always faster the second time. It's always faster once you've crashed once and now you know what you're doing. Um, so I would recommend five minutes. Again, you can set this to whatever you'd like, whatever you feel comfortable with. My recommendation when I was working uh, support for the software, this software company was that you, you back up as frequently as you're comfortable with losing your data. Um, and I stand by that for AutoCAD as well. I mean, if you're, if you're comfortable losing data every five minutes, um, that's what your autosave should be. Now, your autosave shouldn't replace your normal saving. Uh, don't don't count on autosave to uh, to cover your butt every time. I've de developed this nervous twitch. I'm sure anyone who's used uh, Adobe products as well has had the same issue. I know when I was working graphic design, I had this Control S twitch that I would do every thirty seconds. And, um, and it'll save your bacon. It's, it's, uh, saving manually is, uh, definitely the preferred method than, than having to recover from an auto save. The auto save is there in the event that things go horribly wrong. And it's nice to have that, that backup. So those are the system, the drawing variables that we're going to talk about during this, this video. Um, next thing I want to show you is how to save this, uh, this file, which, which looks like it's empty and it looks like it's useless, but now we've, we've changed these variables in it. Let's save this as a template. In order to do that, type SA or go up and click save as, wherever you want to do it. And we're going to save it as a DWT. So let's see here. Here's an AutoCAD DWT right there. And I'm going to save this in the default template located directory here, um, just for now. And we're going to call this configuring AutoCAD. And go ahead and click save. And you can go ahead and click OK. And that's fine. Now up at the top, you'll notice that you're working out of this DWT. Um, and we're going to be working out of this file extensively throughout the rest of this playlist. So if, um, I would recommend you keep this file around. Um, so that's it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Um, I would strongly recommend that before you ask questions that you use the, uh, the help functionality. So type the command that you're having trouble with. So for example, mirror text and press F1 and bring up the documentation on it and see if that will answer your question for you. Um, chances are that's where I'm going to direct you. If you have questions about a command or about what one of these variables does, if you have suggestions, I'm more than interested to hear what you would suggest in a template. If this is a, um, if there are additional things or if you'd change things or, and, and why, um, why is a big thing for me. So, uh, that'd be great. Go ahead and leave those all in the comments below. Go ahead and, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. 
uh, like it, share it. If you thought it was life-changing, go ahead and subscribe. I'll bring you more of them. And I will see you in the next video.